Right golfers, let's talk about five skills I see better players have with their irons that worse or lesser handicapped players don't have. Even when I see two sets of golfers that in theory have the kind of same ability to deliver the club speeds, those kind of things. What good players doing that you are not, the ones that you're playing with, you think, I'm better than them. How are they beating me each time? These five things might be the beginning of the answers to help you start practicing playing some better golf. Hope this helps. Number one, the ability to be able to move strike on the face. So what I mean by that, I'm gonna hit a shot and I've struck that in X position. So there's like one of my standard strikes. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and hit more the toe side of that last strike. So you can see I've still played a functional shot but I've just shifted the toe more, or the strike more out towards the toe. Didn't change my setup, didn't really change my swing. All I did is I came into the ball, I felt like I was just slightly closer towards myself, but still swinging straight. So I wasn't closer towards myself swinging out. I'm not trying to change paths. We're talking millimeters. I delivered one here, and then the next one I tried to deliver everything the same, but just slightly this side. There's the two strikes, the red one being the last one, slightly more toe, and there was my standard strike that I moved it from. So in a range of strikes, the, I'll hit all these numbers. Like I'll hit both of these strikes, but I can move strike on face, meaning I have a certain level of control of delivery, which then in turn allows me to hit from many different lies. Where I won't really go toe or heel much changing, I would if I had a bad strike that kept coming out, I would practice hitting off different parts of the face to try and eradicate. But I will hit some where I try and get higher up the face and some where I know it'll come a little bit more out the bottom of the club so it'll come in a little bit lighter, those kind of ideas. So I'm gonna react to strike to be able to break patterns of bad striking. While in turn, like if I've just got scrubby lie, ball on a horrible lie, I know I can just move that lie away, ball back, handle forwards. It's gonna go more generally kind of decent struck. Certainly ball first, but somewhere middle to up the face, which I can see it has. I can move my strike on my face as a skill. Stronger players have this skill. And it really starts to come through when you get low or higher lofted irons when you get close to the green and they want to just pick it off a bad lie or they want to take lots of grass out because it's in a, you know, a, a grassier lie. Being able to do this in iron shots into wedge shots is an absolute skill. If you're just hitting there hoping the strike comes out every time and you can't move it, there's a better player. There's a better version of you out there. And they haven't got better skills, more speed, bigger, taller, prettier, handsomer, whatever they're just able to move strike on the face, get practicing it. When you're out there practicing next, hit a shot, wherever you hit it on the face, toe, heel, middle, wherever it is, move one where you call it away from that. The more, and even go this way as well, high and low. If you can find where this face is, trying to deliver angles, so paths, face angles, lofts, starts becoming way easier. This is a key, key killer one. Number two. Do you have a good playing field of ball positions? So what I mean, I'm gonna hit this nine iron here from kind of just forward of center, and I'm gonna play a shot. Trying to hit somewhere towards target. It's a little bit of a push, but it's gonna hit most greens. It went X height, it's a standard shot. The next shot I'm gonna hit with the same club is I've now got the ball towards my back foot handle forwards, and I'm gonna play a shot different kind of makeup of shot, didn't quite draw it enough, but again, it's functional hitting most targets and it's going in lower. It's one club, it's a functional shot, it's a different strike, it's a different height. And my ball position changed from just forward to center to now just inside my trail foot. So my playing field of ball positions has moved from the middle all the way to the back. Same club, one more shot. Got the ball position up towards lead heel, less handle lean. It's a way higher shot, it's a different shape. I have let that one go a little, but again, it's gonna hit most screens. And I've got now a huge playing field of ball positions that I can use to create different trajectories, different shapes, different fields of strikes, go over, around obstacles, those kind of things, and work into my standard. If I get into a day where I feel like I'm just a little bit fady with my irons, I might just, on that day, edge the ball position further back. Knowing that for me promotes a little bit more of a draw to get the shape that my mind thinks it wants to see. 
One of the most common questions I get asked around ball position is what is the correct ball position for X club? That's not how I teach it or how I look at it. The bigger answer is what is the playing field of ball position? So for me with a medium iron to low, uh, lofted iron, it's from the front foot to the back foot and I'll be playing from different arrays of places subject to the situation. Again, offering me more skills than the same version of me that just hits from one spot every time with set amount of clubs. Let's stop thinking what's the correct ball position. Let's start understanding our playing field of ball positions and then learning what shots come out from those different playing fields and using them to help you hit more greens. Right, number three, I'm 150 yards out to this hole. I've got my nine iron here. Not a bad strike. Hopefully I've hit it hard enough. Yep, that's pretty much getting up there. So it's comfortably making the 150 yard mark. Now, same club, same distance. I want this never going past the flag or certainly past the green. So I've hit a three quarter nine here, landing at the front and just rolling up. Obviously I can't repeat that, that's a great shot, but I have the ability to take it on. I have the ability to put that into a ray of dispersion where I can send it further or shorter. And then the last shot here, I reckon you can guess where this one's gonna try and go. Same distance, same club. Now trying to throw it over that green. This is the one that's harder for me. Go, 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 go. Little bit longer, did land on the back, but not as much. So I've got a strong, a standard and a short, and I can bleed them or I can play them. And that is such a big skill that good players have, where the version of you with all the same skill sets, like I say, size, clubs, money, time to spend on it, all those excuses that we look for, size, speed, Exactly the same person, just copy and paste yourself. They have this skill, they're probably gonna beat you. Because we see shots so differently, subject to the surroundings, the slope, the trouble, the winds, uh, how we feel on certain days. Out of those three shots, the one that I would use the least is the flat out one. It's my least reliable one. But it might come in a little bit steeper, gives me a bit of stop, so some situations I need it. I don't play it much, but I have it. The little short one at the front, that's my favorite. I feel like I can really knock flags out, hitting more clubs softer, and it's something I need to get back to doing, and I kind of forget doing when I've been doing my speed training, because it's how I play, it's how I feel most comfortable with hitting target. And then the standard one as well, I'm relatively comfortable with as well, but if I'm gonna have an option of going flat out or short, I'm gonna go for the shorter and take more club kind of option. I know that, because I've practiced it. It's a skill I've learned, it's one I've tried to develop, I was gonna say perfect, but we don't perfect anything in this game, unfortunately. But I think you know what I mean. If you don't have these skills with very, all your irons, even through to your hybrids and what have you, and into your wedges, the better player has them and there'll be situations that call for these kind of shots. The biggest pattern I see with these kind of shots as well is they, people tend to have a certain miss with different versions of them. So my little three quarter one here, like that's as left as it feels it will ever go. Call it slightly duffy, that would have gone way left if I'd done that flat out. So what happens is you put a lake up the left, I'm gonna go right, this is definitely a case of me hitting more club softer and I'm just gonna kind of feather it off to the right because that's what comes out. It's not only finding distance, it's really homing in on left and right misses as well by understanding your patterns with these three different shots. You must have more than a stock shot with your iron. That leads into number four, which kind of bleeds into this idea. Lots of players don't understand they even do this, but the nuances of understanding lie. So think of lie as toe up or toe down, hands up, hands down, standing taller, standing lower. If I'm gonna hit a little soft nine into the front of this green, I might stand a little bit taller, get the toe a little bit more in the ground and hit this little cutty thing, built around some little changes. Oh, that's beautiful, that shot. I've got to play this more often, land it at the front, haven't I? Um, so that's coming from me just changing my setup. It's changing my posture, changing my lie angle to try and develop a slightly out-to-in path on this one to just feather it in there on the three-quarter shot. And then blending into the flat out hit. This is, might be now where I'm gonna go more aim out to the right, ball almost goes back, hands go standard to a fraction lower. Oh, I didn't draw it enough, but I go to more speed. 
try and send it, look, to the back of the green there. If I'd have turned that, that would have gone even longer. So my feather, I'm gonna be changing my line more upright. My flat out, I'm gonna be a bit more further away. I'm really trying to sling it a little bit more. It's so intricate and I've worked with so many good players where I talk about this and they go, oh yeah, I am doing that. I'd have never, like they would never articulate it to someone because it's so subtle that they don't know they're doing it. Next time you get out on the range, try some of your hands higher, see what shots it hits. Hands lower with lofted clubs. I mean, for me, if I get tall, toe ending down. This doesn't feel like I can get any speed on this. This feels like quite a rigid little push forward shot. Ah, I didn't quite fade it enough, but look, it's front edge of that green again. Like the repeatability of that for me is just crazy from there. Where if you put me out here, I feel like I can go faster, but it feels a bit more unreliable. Work your patterns in. And again, situations will come where you need these shots, this level of control. That better version of you has that slightly tighter level of control. The last one. This is huge and so underrated. Good players have really strong chip out games. So I am talking, so same distance, 150, but they're able to do it in many different ways. Get down, get down, get down. Not bad, I'd take it. So that was 150 out, punching it under a tree, that was my six iron. Having strong chip out games, and I mean proper strong recoveries from situations. Being able to hit a six iron 100 yards, being able to hit a sling in nine iron, whatever it is, is a huge skill that just your average golfer doesn't practice, but your better version of you, same skills as in kind of opportunities, I should say, than skills, you know, time play and all those things I mentioned, but has this game built in, they've practiced it, they're just gonna win 0.5, 1.52 shots every X amount of holes, because we all need recovery shots. When you go to the range, don't be afraid to practice your chip out shots. Work out the patterns, that's one for me, when I'm in a little low chippy six iron run, definitely can go a little bit left. So I might do things to try and counteract that, but I'll only know that if I practice it aim up the right look, trying to like come back. It didn't on that occasion, but again, not bad for distance. It's gonna run a bit through, but I would take that back of the green from there, taking that all day long. What about a little left to right mover? Like that, I've played that shot so often. That's a great shot. Sit down. <laughs> Six iron again, the handle went high, so it uses all these ideas, ties them in. I came across the ball, let the face, they open to that path. It's going to go lower because it's a six iron from 150. I'm basically pitching with different lofts. These are things you should be playing. When you've got a bucket of 50 balls, get five balls, if that's what you can spare, and play some funky shots before you go out and play or in your practice session with different lofts. Chip out game gets stronger. You're going to beat the same version of you who hasn't got this game. Come on, be honest in the comments down below, how many of you are actually practicing your chip out game? Uh, I know most of my students, I would do this and it takes them forever to find the shots that they need. Where you get a good player, they might get it wrong one or two times, but then they start finding it very quickly. And it's that quick recall that you're gonna need when you play, because you're gonna get one go at it. Five skills with an iron that the better version of you has. Those people who are beating you, that frustrate you, that you think you're better at, they're gonna have some, if not all of these, one, two combinations of these skills that you haven't got. Start working on them. It's not all about hitting perfect angles and swings and on planes and off planes and all the things that we get sold to in the world of golf tuition. Actually trying to acquire better skills could totally lower your handicap coming into the next year. Let me know if this helps. Thanks for watching as always. Hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already to the channel. And remember, hit the like button. If you like these kind of videos, let me know by hitting that like button for me. Thank you as always. See you soon.